In my previous video, I took the time to explain the basic concepts of uh, AC circuits, all right, and certain parameters that can be used in solving problems associated with such circuits. Today, we are going to discuss or rather learn how AC circuit functions, especially when a resistor is connected to it. So let's see. And how do we now identify a particular circuit as an AC circuit and the other circuit as an ordinary circuit? You will see all this in this class today. Before I move into that, don't forget, give us some thumbs up subscribe come on and then hit the bell button on for constant notification so that times when things like these are uploaded you'll be notified without wasting time and ac circuits and ac circuits right with a resistor right with a resistor good so that's what we're going to learn today and this is circuits with a resistor let's look at that diagram we're going to draw it now so we have this is a big resistor all right okay this is going to be some sort of a ammeter measuring the amount of current flowing in there that's what it's going to be this is ammeter because it's going to give us current I flowing through. Then we come down here, we will have a key or switch, all right, that when closes, current flows. Okay, then we have a very simple symbol here that illustrates what we're looking for. <laughs> this is interesting, isn't it? This illustrates what we're looking for or what we're trying to discuss. So we bring down this. Current flows from this angle, right? And then enters the, the resistor R, okay? But there's something we must understand. We also need to find the potential drag V across the resistor. <laughs> I love this. This is very simple. Now, how do we know or how can we identify these circuits as an AC circuit. How can we do that? Simply by looking at this point. Look at this. Look at this. This is AV, an alternating voltage. <laughs> okay, this is an alternating voltage. And once you have an alternating voltage, which is V is equal to V naught sine omega T, of course, it will generate an alternating current, which is I naught. I was to I naught sine omega t. So that is it. So if you look at the symbol, it shows changing. Something is changing at this point. It varies. This sign represents an alternating voltage. And once you have an alternating voltage, alternating current will be generated. It's very simple as that. So take note. Then, having understood all that, of course, when current flows into the resistor R, there must be a certain amount of potential drop or the potential difference across the terminals A and B as a result of the work done by the resistor. Because the resistor is going to resist or offer some amount of resistance to the flow of current, be it an alternative current or a direct current. So it doesn't matter the amount of current, but the only thing is this, there is a resistance being offered. And we must understand that. So if we take note of this, we should also take note of I is equal to, or equals I naught, all right, sine omega t. That's what we're trying to say. So with this understanding, we can solve anything that has to do with a resistor being connected in an AC circuit. That's what I am trying to explain here. 
pay attention closely and understand the concepts, you'll be able to solve problems associated with this. Now let's move on. Have you understand or understood? Have you understood these basic aspects? Then the remaining thing is to, for us to find the current flowing. How do we now find the current flowing into this? We, we, we know it's going to be something like this, but what do we do to find the current? Okay? How do we now find the value of uh, the resistance and so on and so forth? What happens is that we are going to state Ohm's law once again. And it makes it very simple for us. To do that, we have to state Ohm's law as V is equal to I, R. Alright? We know this already. That we are looking for R, it becomes V all over I. We call this, this is equation number one, equation number two. If we are looking for I, we make I the solid becomes V all over R. And this becomes equation number three. And so on and so forth. Now we're looking for what? What are we looking for? What do we want to calculate? That's what it means. We want to calculate the current flowing into this. It's very simple as well. Then we make use of this. Okay? We make use of this. Then we have current flowing into the resistor. It's giving us um, V0. Look at it. Because V is giving us V0 sine omega t, right? V0 sine omega t all over the resistance offered in that circuit. So we can still take this very, very important, right? That's the big value flowing in the current, in the circuit, so to say. If we under, if we have understood that, I just took chalk, okay? I just took chalk. Um, if we have understood this, now we move on from there. Suppose we want to find the value of the resistance in the circuit. The still what we need to do is R is equal to V all over I. But this time around we should know that V has, a, has been represented by uh, V naught sine omega T, okay? All over I is also represented by uh, I naught sine or that. So look at it. So with this, let me take one more chuck. So with this, R can be found as uh, V naught over I naught. Because this we cancel out. <laughs> this is very simple. So we can call this the equation that will give us the value of the resistance if, if we want that. If that's what we want. If we are giving the peak value voltage, okay, and we're giving the peak value current, we can use it to calculate the, the value of the resistance. Also, we shouldn't also forget that we can still calculate um, every other parameters according to what we have. It all depends on the question given. So check out the question given. The content of the question given will let you know what to look for or what to calculate. Very simple. So we don't need to stress ourselves or where do we have to know? Understand this concept. So what next? Check around. Let's see. Do we have something else missing here? Is there anything missing that we have not touched? We want to find the resistance. We can go with this and get it done. We can as well find the resistance by simply stating the form law. R, R is equal to V all over R. We can find this. Okay, but we're talking this in a situation where V naught is given and the I naught is given. So what do we do? That comes into play. But there's something we need to understand here. We need to know what happens when a resistor offering some amount of resistance is connected in an AC signal. What, ha what happens? What happens is that the current, take notes, the current and voltage are in the same phase. Current and voltage, where do I write it? Current and voltage. Current and voltage V 
in the same in the same phase, the same phase, in the same phase, current and voltage maintain the same phase. What does it mean, or have the same phase difference? What does it mean? It means that current and voltage move stepwisely in the same step. Okay, in the same step. None has a lagging behind, no. Two of them move in the same step. In other words, you're going to have something like this. Okay? Where we have current and where we have voltage. Or where we have voltage or where we have current. So that's what it means. Take you know, that when a, a resistor offering some amount of resistance is connected in an AC circuit, both current and voltage are in the same phase. I will end it up here and then see you in my next class when I start solving, solving, no, solving, solving, solving to get uh, solutions to various uh, uh, parameters, you know, those letters we need to find them. I'm leaving you now. See you next class.